Right, so today we're going to be doing authentication in Django. We're going to use JVTs and we're going to use the best way to handle and store JVTs in this video. First thing that we're going to do is create a folder with our project name and we're going to CD into it. After that, we'll create a virtual environment with Python and we're going to activate the virtual environment. We'll need to install Django, Django REST Framework, and Django REST Auth. Now back to our terminal, we'll install Django, Django REST Framework and its requirements. And finally, we'll install Django REST Auth, our authentication package. We also have to install the Django REST Framework Simple JVT. Now to create the Django project, we need to type in Django Admin Start Project, and then the name of our project ending with the dot. We need this dot so that the project is created in the current directory. So now that we created our project, we have our project name here, we have the manage.py file. We're going to go to our settings inside of our project and we're going to do the following. We have to, in our installed apps, add REST framework. We're going to say REST underscore framework. After that, we're going to add the REST framework auth token and then we're going to add the Django REST auth package that we're using for authentication. Now we're going to scroll to the bottom of the file here. And we're going to add a variable called rest auth and it's essentially a configuration variable that we're going to be using for the django rest auth package and in this variable we're going to set use jvt to true we're also going to have the jvt auth cookie it's going to be a string and we can name it anything we want so we're going to say our application name for example django auth django jvt auth underscore cookie let's say and we also have the refresh cookie so we're going to say jvt auth refresh cookie and we're going to do the same so i'm going to copy this i'm going to say for example refresh cookie so this is for the refresh token and we can save this and this means that we'll be using jvt and we're going to have these secure cookies so we'll not be using local storage it's going to be set in our browser and we can access it anytime that we want. It will expire by itself and we won't have to manage anything. We'll just have authentication from the get-go. In order for us to be able to use JVTs, we also have to add the following four lines and that's the REST framework configuration and we're gonna have the default authentication class to be the JVT cookie authentication. So now that we've added these apps, we want to register their URLs. So we'll have to create a new app in Django. So we're gonna go to our terminal and we're gonna say Python. We're at the root of the project. We're gonna say Python manage by start app and we we can name our app let's say user auth or auth because that's what it should be taking care of that's its only responsibility so we're going to say user auth and we created the app now if we go back to our editor here we can see that we have user auth directory created here and in this directory here we're going to need to create an urls file go urls.py and in this file we're going to register the django rest auth endpoints we're going to be only looking at the login right now so we're going to say url patterns and this is going to be a, an array hopefully i spelled this correctly so this is going to be an array and in here we can register the views that we have from the J django rest auth so we're at the top of the file we're going to import from django rest auth dot views and we can import the login view and we can then register it here so we're going to say path and we can say login and then say login view as view and we can give it a name of login so we registered this and we have to import from django dot urls we have to import the path and that's it so now that we have this registered, we can actually have the URL for logging in. Then we can get, we can see the response and see how it works. So now we're going to go to the URLs file inside our project name. So we're going to go here and we have to register the URLs from the user auth app that we have. So we're going to say path and then we can say, for example, API slash auth. And then we can include our user auth URLs and we have to import this include so we can Go to the imports here, delete these comments, you can say include. And here we're going to have our app name. So we're going to say user auth dot URLs. So now we have the URLs imported and we can access them. So now all that we have to do is go to our settings, go to our installed apps at the top, add the user auth application that we have, and we have to run some migrations. So we're going to go back to our terminal. We're going to say Python manage py 
and then we're going to say migrate. It should run all the migrations and it should be working for you since we're using the default SQLite database that Django has. Now let's create a user. We're going to say Python. And we're going to say manage pi and we're going to say create super user. We're going to give it an admin username. The address is not important at the moment and we can give it a password. I'll give it some basic password, but in, in production, this should be way better. So we're going to say bypass validation. Yes. And we created the user successfully. Now we're going to run the app. We're going to say Python manage pi. And we're going to say run server. And it should be running on localhost 8000 at the localhost 8000. And we can see that we have the admin URL and the API slash auth. So if we visit API slash auth, we can see that we have one route and that's our login route. Now we're going to test them with an API client. Now we are in our API client and we can create a new endpoint. We're going to say it's a login endpoint. It's a post request and we're going to say it's at localhost 8000 slash API slash auth slash login you can create the endpoint it's 8000 not 8009 you can go to body and we're going to send a json that has a username and a password so we're going to say username and it's going to be admin and we can give it a password and that's going to be admin 123 now if i send this request we get the response and we get the access token that we have now this also sends as you can see, it says sends a set cookie header, which means this will be set inside our browser and we won't have to store the access token or the refresh token anywhere inside local storage or anything else. We can also, of course, guess the username or the password wrong and we're going to get the bad request and able to log in with provided credentials, which is also great. Now, from this point onward, you can build anything you want. You can, of course, extend this by adding registration and then you can continue building your application, doing business logic without actually have to think about authentication this will work the, the set cookie header is going to be working all the time and you won't have to manage anything on the front end side i hope this video was helpful if you have any suggestions please write them down thanks for watching